G'day everyone and welcome to my channel Alchemy Art. Today I'm making some beautiful candle holders. I'll list all the materials down below in the description box so don't be worried if I don't mention them as we move through the video. I've mixed up my resin and I don't have a purple epoxy paste or tint so I'm going to use some Atelier acrylic ink. I'm going to make these a graduated uh, change in colour from a dark to a light or a light to a dark depending on which way I pour. I've um, got about 60 mils of mixed resin in each cup and to begin with in one cup I've added two drops of the ink mixing it really really well then I'll pick up some on my stick and just judge um, how opaque it is or transparent it is. I think this is too pale still so I'm adding I think it was another six drops so that's eight drops in total of the ink. I'm not sure how much these molds hold I, I forgot to check before I started and I haven't used this before so I always keep a spare mold nearby just in case I have excess just so there is no waste mixing really well, checking the colour again and I'm much happier with this. I already know that two drops of the dioxazine purple ink gives me a lovely transparent purple colour. That's what I decide to use in this middle layer. Stir really well again, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, mix well to combine thoroughly. I lift it up on my stick, check that the colour is good and I'm happy with this. For this middle section I decide to add some La Res Flitter Flake in Bliss Indigo Ice. Pick up a, a chunk on my stick and pop it in. It's always best to start with less, you can always add some more later if you like. I've also decided to add a chunk or a scoop into my 60 mils of mixed resin clear on its own. When you're mixing in these fine uh, iridescent flakes it's best to start slowly, sort of fold the resin over the top of the flakes, stir slowly and as they sink or combine in increase your speed and mix really well. Now I have my three layers mixed, it's just a matter of deciding whether I want to go dark to light or light to dark and get start pouring. You need to think in reverse when you're pouring, so the first colour you pour in will be at the top when you demould. I decide to go with the dark colour first, give it an extra mix, pinch my little cup to make a spout. I'm trying not to introduce too many bubbles and it's a bit hard to tell in the video but as I'm pouring I'm trying to drizzle it down the side of the mould so that uh, I'm not creating too many bubbles as I pour it in. I move slowly and use one hand to slowly turn the mould as I go. This candle mould is actually see-through so once I've used about half of my mix I did pick it up and just check how much was in there and I'm happy with that amount so I move on to the next one and repeat the same process. I'm very close to the mould by the way as well like probably less than a centimetre as I do this. Exactly the same as the first one moving slowly drizzling down the side and using one hand to turn slowly as I go. Now I have the darkest colour in my moulds. I'm going to do the middle section of the pour, which has the gorgeous indigo ice flakes from La Res in the transparent purple mix. I do the same process again. Gradually pour it in very close to the mould and turning the mould as I go. I do one mould and then repeat to the second mould straight after. Almost done, onto the final layer which is the clear with the indigo ice flakes on their own. I'm near the top of my mould now so I pour very low but straight into the centre and let the mix flow over the sides to give good coverage. I repeat it to the second mould and you can always top it up a little bit if you need or add a few more flakes here if you want to. 
it's uh, totally up to you. On to the final step, which is to use some isopropyl alcohol to spritz the surface of the resin well. It breaks up the surface tension and allows any bubbles to pop easily. I covered these up overnight with a food tent to stop any hairs or um, dust getting in. And this is the next day. As you can see, the base is darker. Well, I went back about oh, maybe two hours after I poured last night and I decided to make it darker on the base so the indigo ice flakes would show up better. I used some Marabou alcohol ink in metallic violet and added eight drops on the surface and covered them back up with the tent overnight. Now it's time for demolding. There is an easier way to get uh, silicone mold off your casting as per I learnt from Wendy from Toonpish Crafts and I'll link her channel below and you spray down the sides with some isopropyl alcohol. It helps get the mold out easier. But I totally forgot and decided to fold the mold over on itself and gently prise it out. Thankfully that worked okay for me. Once I had my resin piece out, I gently returned the mould to its original state by folding it back, moved on to my second casting and repeated the same process again. I did get a bit stuck with this one and I think it was here that I remembered Wendy's hint but I decided to persist anyway. I should have left the sound in because it makes a very slippery, interesting sound as you pull these out. While I really adored how these two turned out, it was about now while looking at these and looking at the beautiful colours uh, that I decided I might want to take these to the next level. So please stay to the end and I'll show you what I did next to these gorgeous little candle holders. I decided I want to put my candle holders onto a crystal like background so I decided to use this druzy mould that I made a while back and once I've poured the resin in I'm going to back it with some iridescent film. We'll go into making druzies and making moulds from them and druzy inserts and normal inserts that you can use for your resin pour later on in future videos. This is Just Resin Art Coat that I had from a different project and I had some left over. So I've poured it into my druzy mould just using a popsicle stick to push it out to the edges. Then I use a makeup micro brush and go around the edges and then to any of the deeper divots in my mould to release any of the bubbles that might be trapped. I can see a lot of bubbles on the surface as well so I use my craft heat gun on a low setting being careful not to leave the heat in one spot and moving quickly over the surface so I don't fuse my resin to my silicon mold. Next I'm adding the iridescent film once it's cut to size. The easiest way I find to do this is to put one edge down into the resin and let the resin suck it down. I then use my hand to gently press it all over right up to the edges. I covered it up overnight with a food tent and this is how it looked about 14 hours later. I've put it on a black surface so you can see the iridescent film in the background. It's really quite pretty. Gently peeling back my mould to get it out and I'm quite interested to see how this looks from the other side. I haven't used my mould before so this is a first for me as well. It released easily from my mould and is absolutely gorgeous and shimmery under the light. I of course made two of these as I have two candle holders and I'm on to my next step. As I said earlier in my video, whenever I use resin, I keep moulds nearby for any excess resin that uh, I have and I pour it into the moulds. And that's how I made those little crystals that you can see to the left and the right. What I want to do is put the candle holder in the middle and then attach my crystals that I've made around the outside edge. I'll link the crystal mould down below. It's a gorgeous mould. To attach the candle holder to the base, I'm using Araldite, which is a two-part, a five-minute epoxy. And I'm just using a, a lid off a plastic container as my mixing palette. Squeeze out the amount I think I'll need. Then a popsicle stick is used and I thoroughly combine the two components for the recommended amount of time. 
Five minute epoxies mean that once you start mixing, they will have five minutes before they start to harden. So you need to work quickly, apply it to one or both sides of the two components that you want to adhere together and press for the time as per the instructions. I press for about two minutes, but I don't put you through that in this video. I repeat the process to the second base and then I just pick them up to make sure they are well adhered. Tip them on the side to make sure they didn't fall off. On to adding the crystals around the edges and for this I'm going to use some UV resin and some Colour Obsession Opal Rainbow Shimmer Pigment Paste. I'm doing this at night so there's no sunlight around and to cure the UV resin I'll need a UV light. I have both a UV torch and a, a UV lamp. Once I've decanted about 20 mils of the UV resin, open up my Colour Obsession pigment paste in Opal Rainbow Shiver, give it a good stir uh, as soon as I've opened the jar until all components inside are well combined and drizzle a nice amount of this into the surface of my UV resin. Then I use another popsicle stick and thoroughly combine the two together. This should go really well with my crystal base and the um, handmade crystals and make it look a bit seamless I'm, I'm hoping. Once it's well combined, I use the mix as a type of glue to adhere my crystals where I want them to go around the base. I either drizzle it onto the surface of the base at the edge, or sometimes I put it onto the bottom of the crystal that I'm about to push down. Once I have the piece in place, I use my UV torch for the recommended amount of time which is about three minutes for this UV resin and ensure that the crystal is well stuck in place. I repeat the process to the next crystal and put it in place, use the UV light again and slowly work my way around the whole piece. At the end when I've got all the pieces in place and I'm happy with where they are I decide to use my UV lamp as well just to make sure that the UV light has gone all the way through the UV resin that I've added. Now they're complete and I've sat them on a lit lamp base to have a look. I think they've turned out absolutely gorgeous with some lit candles inside and the lights turned down. Even the base in the bottom is gorgeous with the light or without. I hope this tutorial has helped somebody. Please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day everyone.